Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the most special link to the cast of the year, our season finale. It's game of the year 2021. I can hardly believe we're already here and it's our second game of the year stuck inside mostly. Uh, but enough on that. Let's talk about the merriment, uh, all the, the the highs and lows of video games in 2021. I'm your host, Dave Ryan, and I'm joined by the usual game of the year panel. First, he's a platforming prodigy and the man that has spent more time on the game of the year spreadsheet this year than he has probably seen. He's definitely more than he's seen me. It's Mark <laughs> Robinson. <laughs> Hello. How's it going? Yeah, I'm not too bad. It's It's been a pretty hectic week or two trying to coordinate getting all of the, the Game of the Year blogs and getting that updated and ready. But um, And on top of deciding to just become like social media management guy for Link to the Cast and, you know, trying to do all the content for that, uh, inspired by the likes of uh, new permanent host of the show, Garrett Kidney and Barry here. So it's it's been a manic couple of weeks or so, mm-hmm. but it's been good and fun and it's the joys of working remote and having more time to do this kind of stuff now. So mm-hmm. yeah, I'm all good. Uh, I'm congratulations on your sixth cap on game of the year. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm still, still you know, disappointed. I, I wasn't here for the original one, but um, yeah. But it was, it was actually nice. I It's the one that I've listened to the least because I tend to, you know, I'll go back and like listen to the others. And I was listening to a bunch of them this year. So I was trying to kind of grab notes and bits and pieces. Mm. Um, but I went back and listened to that first one. And uh, you, you, Brian and, and Jack did a, a fine, a fine inaugural edition of the Game of the Year. Uh, speaking of people who have made the full seven Game of the Years for a link to the cast. It's Mr. Chelsea, Jack Lazell. Jack, how are you this year? In significantly better health, I would hope. Yeah, I really hope I don't have to abandon any recordings due to pneumonia this year. I, uh, I'm, I'm keeping my fingers crossed um, and, and and all of the wood around me is being touched. Um, that's not a metaphor for anything, by the way. I just, yeah, I, I'm, I'm excited, Dave. I, I love Game of the Year season. Uh, I do think I get to kind of November and start thinking like, oh man, I really need a whip into shape my thoughts on on my favorite games of the year. Like I kind of go through like a little like middle of the year slump sometimes where I'm not quite on it and I'm maybe not playing as many games and, you know, it's like the summer. So you're kind of out more and stuff. But as the weather gets cold, as the nights draw in, as the unfortunately rising COVID cases goes up, I've been bang on it for the last couple of months, just thinking about like the different categories and where we're all going to land this stuff. So I'm, I'm right. I'm up for this. I'm very up for this right now. Rounding out the panel, of course, also making his sixth appearance on Game of the Year. It's a twitch.tv superstar, Barry Murphy. Barry, how are you this year? I am not too bad, Dave. And as I think I joked a couple of days ago, one of these years, boys, we're going to do it live. We're just going to put it all out there for the world to see warts and all. We'll go live some night on on, on, on Twitch doing our Game of the Year debate. And we just won't stop until we get and we pick <laughs> oh. one. That's the real, that's going to be the real test. We go full, was it Fire Escape did six hours straight yes. on Twitch last night? I the haven't, Dan uh, at Broadway. I, I haven't, I haven't ba- uh, uh, fired up that bad boy yet to keep my, uh, my, my, my palette untainted uh, uh, for our own Game yep. of the Year uh, uh, festivities. Same. I I tend to like one of the reasons we went when we did recording our first one uh, was to not have consumed any of the giant bomb game of the year and and tempt us to vote one way or the other. And the tradition continues here. Uh, Speaking of traditions on game of the year, let's go around the table and just uh, a quick mention if anybody has uh, any big games they didn't get to this year. Um, Stuff that was on the backlog on the, the pile of shame and just didn't make it in time for your nominations on December 1st. Uh, we'll start with you, Mark. Uh, I think the big one for me is I played the demo of Unsighted and I was really liking what that was doing, but mm. just didn't get around to just kind of sticking any more time into it. Um, I, I pl- we, we played about an hour and a half, two hours of It Takes Two. Mm. Uh, and I'd have like been curious to play more of that as obviously that is now, you know, officially in canon, the game of the year, apparently. Um, so yeah, there's that. Uh, the Forgotten City, I heard some good things about and I didn't get to that. Um, and then a couple of other things, but I don't think any of them would have probably, you know, really like hit the top 10. Stuff like Chicory, I, I kind of quickly had a look at and Demon Turf looks like something I'd enjoy. But yeah, yeah. Um, 
I, I don't think there was anything kind of too crucial. Like I was never going to play <laughs> Res Evil Village anyway. Um, so, you know, that's probably like the biggest thing this year that um, I didn't play, but that was you know, more by choice than anything else. Uh, what about you, Jack? Yeah. <laughs> I did play Resident Evil Village, let me tell you. Um, I think mine would probably be, and it's funny because it was kind of a recent jolt uh, to the old memory banks, would probably be Psychonauts 2 uh, I didn't get too involved with. And I guess the other one is Returnal, but I think Returnal is more to protect myself from knowing that that sort of game causes me anxiety. Like, And I think uh, for that reason, not playing too much Hades last year when the whole world was kind of loving it. And uh, that that's and, just and, kind of a my taste kind of yeah. thing, I would say. I, it's, it's kind of similar to your Cuphead thing when that came out. Oh, yeah. It's like I, I look at Cuphead, I admire it. I watch other people play it and execute it really well. But I know that if I tried to play it, I would like it less. I don't want to like Cuphead less. Cuphead's fantastic. Um, I've watched some footage of Psychonauts too. Um, I listen to a very passionate um, uh, analysis from yourself, Dave, on, on the last link to the cast there, episode 234 on all your podcast apps if you want to go and listen to it and uh and, and it really kind of clicked in my head that there's probably a lot more to the game that maybe i'm not seeing and haven't really got into to understand and i think that that's probably an oversight on my part but then i didn't really play the original psychonauts so i don't know it's kind of like you know if you're trying to invite someone to go see spider-man no way home and they haven't seen any of the other spider-man do they really go see it with you or is that one of the things that you can just jump into a psychonauts to i'm not really sure they're like what the hell's a spider-man yeah <laughs> who's this pete spider-man and what's he doing uh yeah no no idea but uh yeah psychonauts is probably the big hole i'd say for me uh what about you barry uh, yeah, the Forgotten City that Mark mentioned, that was uh, on the list for me, just did not get around to it. Uh, just added to Game Pass this week, but just too late. I really wanted to play it, but Lake, I didn't get a chance to play. That looked really cool. I played Lake. Um, it, was, it, it was good. It was good. I, 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 I do like that kind of burgeoning kind of cozy game genre, for lack of a better term. And that seemed like a great one. I would have loved to have just chilled out and played it just... Yeah. To, to, to arrive too late on Game Pass, you 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 roll the Game Pass dice, and sometimes you get it, and it comes too late. Um, Far Cry Six, I did not get around to. Uh, I was hoping to grab it in the sales. I, I I I made some other choices, informed by listening to this podcast and things I knew I would have to play for Game of the Year. Far Cry Six was right there with them, uh, but there were some other heavy hitters uh, that I I plumped for instead. Um, Basically, barrier just sounds like all the games that I played. You were like, oh, no, no, that's, not, that's not essential for me because yeah. I because what what <laughs> what was on the, the what was neck and neck with Far Cry was Life is Strange, which I did get. Ah. And I did start. Although my, my final one, I didn't get to finish Life is Strange. Um, uh, uh, that and It Takes Two, I thoroughly enjoyed both of them, but they were they were uh, uh, play with the better half games, which means you have to align two schedules to make time to play them. Yeah. Um, uh, admittedly, Life is Strange, that was by choice. I could have played it on my own, but that would have been very cold of me. Um, and It Takes Two literally had to align two schedules to play. So neither of those got finished. Um, and obviously, you know, started them, which is great, but enjoyed them so much. It's like, man, I would have loved to have getting across the finish line. So I really knew what I'm, what I'm dealing with for that. Uh, but those, those are two big ones for me. Uh, for me, I guess, um, I'd echo Jack in Returnal was definitely one for me where like that game looked fantastic. I spent the first while with a PS5 complaining about how there weren't, PS5 exclusive games for me to play then Returnal comes out and I'm like no no not that though <laughs> <That's> <laughs> not I was looking for a more chill PS5 exclusive experience to start things yeah. off with I I absolutely will get to Returnal in 2022 I know that and I feel like if I get into the groove with it like I did something like a Cuphead I will regret not having gotten to it to, to force it onto the list here uh, Chicory is on mine as well um, I kind of really wanted to get to it originally when I, I saw stuff about it but then kind of we talked about it a couple of times on the podcast and it cooled me off a little or at least it knocked it down a little bit on the priority list and just never got to it and the other one I, I was going to say I feel like if that had launched on the Switch on, on every other platform I oh, think yeah. we probably would have played it it's on Switch now, isn't it? It is, yeah. It yeah. just got ported recently. Yeah. 
um because i saw it on the store there um a couple of days ago um and then the other thing because i had a feeling no one else was going to get to it because it's so outside what we'd usually play but i heard people on podcast left right and center raving about it is inscription um yes. yeah i wanted to look at that but it's a card yeah. game which is obviously not for me everybody knows you know it's been seven years since my original fuck off gwent takes on uh, the witcher <laughs> 3 um so they know how i feel about card games but people absolutely like even not people i would associate with playing card games a lot you know like if i heard a brad shoemaker or somebody like a, a dota head talking about it, i'd be like okay that's one thing but like this is pretty much everybody who's touched this game is like oh man inscription rocks I, i've not played it but even just looking at it i feel like that's a dave ryan game yeah so that will again that might be on the regretted list in 2022 that i didn't get to but hey if it gets an update next year maybe i'll get it into the not of this year category um right okay before we dig into our first topic it's time to discuss the rules of engagement i have them written down here and i shall go through them uh each person was allowed 10 nominations per category with the exception of our best game of not this year award the only games that qualify for any category are games that received their full 1.0 release in europe between the 1st of december 2020 and the 1st of december 2021 on a trial basis this year and last year, we've included a small number of games uh, that received small PC releases prior to this date. Uh, games receiving multiple nominations automatically got shortlisted. The remaining slots on the list awarded as fairly as possible to passion projects of one of us or objective contenders for the category. At the top of a category, once I've read out the list of nominees, anyone is allowed to throw in a last minute audible and add a game that they hadn't initially nominated or didn't get to finish by December 1st. In deciding our winners, we take it in turn to strike a game off the list until we arrive at a winner. Members of the panel can contest a strike by either arguing their case or offering an alternative game to take its place on the chopping block. Because we argue about it so much in 2016, we reserve the right to split best soundtrack category if we're locked between an original composed soundtrack and a curated soundtrack of pre-existing music. In the event of a hopeless deadlock in a category, we will turn to the results of the Link to the Cast tiebreaker poll, which is in its fourth year this year, where the remaining game on our list that received the highest number of votes in the poll will be declared the winner. Game of the Year is the only category for which we settle on an ordered list of first, second, and third. Are we ready, gentlemen? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. 